In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make your DualSense Edge aim stick more accurate. The effect on the controller when using different USB ports on PS5, which is the best for aiming? When is it better to use Bluetooth over USB? Does USB cable brand affect the input lag? Can you use a USB hub and the safest way to charge your controller? And some interesting tests based on the new micro power monitor I've got to give you the best possible experience. Let's start with charging. If you want your battery to last longer and stay safer, here's what you need to know. The input of DualSense Edge is 5V up to 1500 mAh. There are multiple ways to charge your controller. Using the PS5's USB port, a charging stand, a USB hub, a phone charger, your computer port, or a power bank. There is one thing you must consider for all of them. The output voltage shouldn't execute 5 volts. If it goes over that voltage, there are huge chances that it will kill your controller for good. In the case of a phone charger, you can check the label and manual and look for output section. Some chargers support multiple output, for example, 5V, 2A, 9V, 2A, 12V, and more. In these cases, you are safe to use them. Even if it is 5V, 3A, it's still safe. Let me tell you why. We know the max current is 1.5A on DualSense Edge. But if you use a charger capable of higher output ampere, it's not going to force it, meaning the controller can use as much current as it needs. So the voltage is important, but the current will be adjusted by the controller. For USB hubs, check if the power for them is being 5V charger or higher. For example, this one is safe, but this one has a 12V input. And using these fast charging ports will kill your controller because the only output is 12V. It happened to me once. The USB hubs that get their power from PS5 itself or your PC are likely to be safe. The same with any standard USB port on your PC or laptop. As I tested the controller with a 5V 3A phone adapter that has multiple output from ASUS, it was only using as much current as it needed and you can also see in this micro power meter that current is typically under 1A. Of course, it depends on the situation. It may use more power when it's empty compared to when it's closer to 100%. I also tested USB ports on PS5 to see which one can give you more power. But before I do that, I've noticed your PS5 uses a around 0.3 watts power even when it's off. It's probably because of the Bluetooth to be able to turn it on by the controller. From the tests I made and monitoring the power when connecting the controller, the console was using 5 to 6 watts higher power when using a Type-C port which shows it's somewhere around 5 volt 1 ampere. I tested it once again with the black USB-A port and I've got the same results. Meaning the charging speed with both of these USB ports are the same and they can provide enough power. The USB 3 back ports had the same results when it was connected directly. But I tried with a USB 3 extender cable and it was only outputting 1 watt, meaning this USB extender cable causes a lower power and I have to mention higher delay for your controller. Don't use such things, instead get a good long cable if you need to. I also tested this USB 3 hub and without external power, the controller was working fine, but it was only giving me 1.5 watts. Typically by using a USB hub without external power or extender cables that can't get enough power, your controller is less likely to charge at all while playing, and it gets higher delay due to less power and other metrics. Now you might be wondering what if I leave my controller plugged in after it's fully charged or overnight? Well, as I tested it, when the battery is full, the controller refuses to get any power. Meaning either with PS5 or even using a phone adapter, after the charge is full, even if it is plugged in, it doesn't use any power. There is no risk in terms of how you may have been misinformed in the past. It's safe. Now you might be wondering then why Sony doesn't recommend it inside the instructions as it says don't leave the controller plugged in for long periods of time. Or why do we have the option to turn off supply power to USB ports after 3 hours? There are two reasons for that. Firstly, when the console is in rest mode, if the controller doesn't need to charge, it's gonna use extra power because of the power supply to USB ports. Even if you want to charge your controller, 3 hours is typically enough to get it charged about 80 to 90%. So afterward, there is no need to waste power. But if it was unsafe, 
we didn't have the option to put it to always because Sony also knows there won't be any issues. The second reason is there is a very small chance near zero that some surge happens somewhere in the console or your house or any other power supply. Of course, you have a lot of protection methods and standards nowadays to reduce the risk, but it's not zero. So if the controller is fully charged, if you leave it there for let's say all night or a day or two or even more, it's fine. But if you leave it for let's say weeks or months, there is more chance that some unexpected thing happens and causes issues with the controller. Now what if you use a charger that is weaker than recommended? Let's say 5 volt but 1 ampere. Firstly, don't use a charger that is under 5 volt. That can cause a lot of issues. But if the current is lower like 5 volt to 1 ampere instead of 1.5 or 2, it's okay. It may just take more time to charge the controller but wouldn't cause issues. One thing I've noticed is if you play on Bluetooth and charging your controller with phone charger, there's a chance of more heat for the battery. In those cases, it's even better to use a 5 volt to 1 ampere to get less heat while playing. Pro tip here. What about a USB hub? As long as the input is rated as 5 volt, you'll be fine. But there are some USB hubs that have 12 volts input. Those are not safe for charging a 5 volt device. They'll kill it very fast. So check the input of the USB hub, your monitor USB charging ports as well. Check the output voltage before using them. What about the input delay? Delay is the time when you press a button until it takes action in the game. We want it to be as low as possible. As I tested it in idle and match the input delay in idle is the same with all ports even the black usb a port but once you get into the game i found it a bit slower than the others sometimes so the best port for playing and lower input delay is a type c port or the back ports but the difference we are talking about is under 3 milliseconds it's not a big deal you can get a type c to type c cord for that or just use back ports it's all your choice when is it better to use bluetooth in a set of cable typically cable has a lower delay on dualsense edge but adds more delay in some games on dualsense but if you want to use bluetooth no matter what it's better to use it when there is no 2.4 gigahertz device too close to ps5 or the controller like a router or your phone or your earbuds etc they can affect the input delay and cause jitter. By the way, if you're wondering if USB cable brand matters for response time or charging, the answer is yes. However, most typical cables would work fine, but it's best to have the official cable or from trusted brands to get the maximum power. Now it's time to talk about DualSense Edge right stick response curve accuracy. I've seen many comments about DualSense Edge feeling different compared to normal DualSense even on default curve and it's not as accurate or as easy to control. So I did put them both in advanced testing to find out why it feels like that. What's the difference and how to get the best care for more accuracy. Before I show you the test and results, I want you to tell me in the comments, do you feel that too? Do you feel the default curve in DualSense Edge is not the same as DualSense and it feels more chunky or less accurate? Tell me in the comments and then watch the rest of the video. I made advanced hardware tests on PS5 in Modern Warfare 3 in multiple ways and the delay, the speed and and the curve shape are the same. The slight differences you see here in the test results are due to input delay in the game and other factors for controller. However, I'll do an advanced test with aim assist soon. But for the curve shape, I'm sorry if it felt different to you. There is no difference in any steps we tested it. But considering more factors, it has two reasons why you feel like that while there is no difference on the stick module itself. Reason 1. The design of the controller. It's slightly different and may cause different behavior with the same actions coming from a normal dual sense. Reason 2. The average input delay and response time on the controller. We've done this test in the past too, in both wireless and wired mode. DualSense Edge has a lower input delay and that causes a faster response to your actions. Let's compare it to when you have aim smoothing in Overwatch 2, which is how it affects here. It changes everything, the behavior of aim assist, aiming and many more. This is an important reason why you feel like that. I have two solutions for it. Solution 1. Try precise curve with curve adjustment on minus 4 or minus 2. If it isn't good enough, start from minus 5 and go higher one step at a time. Play a game and 
see where it feels better. For me on minus 4 feels similar and that's because of the next solution. Solution 2. I recently found a new way to become more accurate and control it more easily and that was using these new thumb caps which have a taller edge around the center and the material is slightly harsher than the original one which helps me to have more control over the aiming and being more accurate. To find how they work my honest review and if they worth buying you can check the video on the screen or click the first link in the description or the comments below. I'll catch you there.